Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to solve another problem. The problem is we have to execute the sync task in sequence. Sequence as in when the first task finishes, we have to move to the second task. So we have to do it in sequences. Now to solve this, I over here have this function called create a sync task. What it does is based on the randomness if the random value is less than 5 it will create a new promise and reject that promise otherwise if the value is greater than 5 then it will resolve so based on the randomness we will get certain values either the promise will resolve or reject we have to handle both here i have created an array of async tasks so this function that creates a new promise that randomly resolves or reject we have invoked it six times so we have six different uh, you know promises in the array and we have to create this function async sequence that will take this array of tasks and then once the um, all the task has been finished running in sequence we'll invoke this callback with two lists one is the errors list and second is the results list so let's say out of six two promises fail and four pass so we'll have four in the result the pass promises with the value and the in the error we'll have two promises value so in the error we will get this message error and then the value if the value is less than 5 so it should be 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 and in the resolve we will get uh, value into 1000 so let's say if the promises passes or fulfilled uh, we will get uh, um, any number multiplied by 1000 which is greater than 5 or equal to 5 so let's get started this is uh, a very important promises questions that is usually asked to beginner because um, running the promise in parallel and sequence these two uh, are the base for many of the promises related problems so we'll see um, in the coming videos how uh, you know these are related we have to solve multiple problems based on the promises so let's uh, let me create this um, i'll take this function and this will take the task and the callback so we are going to see two solutions over here the first solution will be based on the array reduce method which is one of the most powerful methods in the javascript uh, 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 available to the array we use it very often in the programming i'll add the link to it in the um, description i have a detailed article on it so let me create one array which will store the promises that are passed and then i'll have the another array that will store the promises that have been failed also i will have a tracker to track how many promises have been executed and then on the task i'm going to add a reduce method so if you are not aware reduce takes previous value and the current value so let's say previous and the current and it also takes a default value or the initial value so initially what i'm going to pass is a promise that resolves why because we have to execute things in sequence so how reduce works is it will take the initial value it will do the computation and then return the value of the initial value that we can use in the next call so it will execute this function for the number of items in the array so the current will hold the items from the array let's say once it's invoked initially the current will have the value of first item second third fourth fifth and sixth and the previous will have the previous computed value so to the start we are having a promise resolve and after that once this promise resolve will return its value and then it will be used in the previous so here what i'm going to add is we are going to return a value so reduce expect expects us to return something so here i'll have previous dot finally so i am adding a finally block because we are handling two cases which is either passed or failed so irrespective if the promise passes or fails we have this finally block that invokes it's a, a similar logic that we have for the try catch and finally so irrespective you go to try or catch block will always end up in the finally block so that's how it works that's why we have finally over here and so right now on the initial call promise dot resolve is there that means this promise will resolve and we'll have this previous dot finally invoked inside this i'm going to return and i'm going to invoke the current 
and I'm going to have the then method on it. So in the promises, in the thenable promises, the then block accepts two callbacks. One is for the resolved promises, another is for the rejected promises or else you can have the catch block also. So separately, so this will handle resolve, this will ha handle uh, rejected and then we'll have the finally block. So it's up to us how do we want to you know use or make use of the syntax. So first let's go to the then block. If our promise pass, what we'll do is in the results, I'm going to push the past promises. If my promise fails, I'm going to in the errors, I'm going to push the error that I have received. And then in the final block, so let, let me pull this down. We have then, we have catch, and then we have finally. So once the execution has completed, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the flag of completed and then check if completed equal to equal to task dot length. That means if all the promises are executed, then we'll invoke the callback with results sorry errors so first value is error and then the results so task error and result now because the promises will invoke or run in sequence so let's say we have five promises and each of them are resolving after one second so we'll see the output after five second because First one is executed after then the second one will start after that third one will take place. So that's how you will see that when I run the application, there is a delay in the output that is being shown because once all the promises are executed in the sequence, then only we'll see the result. So see, we got two results. We have in total of six promises, three failed, which was one, zero and four value less than five. And then three passed, which was 6,000, 5,000 and 8,000, which is equal to 6, 5 and 8. Let me run this again. So you see that uh, the maximum time, right? Uh, let's say this promise is resolved after 6 seconds. After that, it will take 5 seconds to resolve the second one. So 6 plus 5, 11 plus 8, 19 seconds. So this is how the sequence of promises will take place. Let me run this again. And we'll see that depending upon, you know, uh, how many numbers we are getting we'll see the output in after that delay. So in this case, only one promise has failed the first one. And then after that, all the five no, next five were passed. So we got the result as 8,000, 5,000, 8,000, 7,000 and 6,000. So this is the one way which is uh, in which we can, you know, run the promises in sequence using the array reduce. Another way is sorry here array reduce. Another way is we can make use of for let of hoop. Sorry, for let of loop. So um, JavaScript has introduced this for let of uh, loop in the ES6 that helps us to run the task, uh, async task in, uh, in the loop in the sequence. So for that, what we have to do is we have to turn this function to async function so that we can make use of the await keyword. And after that, I'll remove this and here what i'll do is i'll say for let task of task and then inside that i'll wrap this in try catch block so here let response equals to await task and if we get the response we'll push that in the results uh, dot push response whatever we get if the promise is fulfilled if the promise fails then we will push that in the errors errors dot push and then e and finally when the execution has completed so we are going to invoke the callback with the errors and results in this case, I think we don't have to make use of the tracker. Let me clear this. Let me pull this up and then click on the run button.
so you'll see that the promises are being executed we are seeing a delay in the result and only when all the promises are executed we'll see the output when the callback is invoked so see we got the uh, output there is one promise that has failed and then the remaining has passed so how await keyword works is in the loop until and unless this task has been completed the next start execution won't start so only when this task is executed and await keyword is fulfilled we move to the next task that's why this loop will take time as much it takes to resolve all the promises in the list so let's say only after this six all six of the promises are resolved we move to the last statement in the function which is the callback that's why you see that callback executes with the result and not with the empty array because this loop this will exec uh, complete executing only after all the promises are executed or settled in the uh, list of the promises so that's how you can create or run promises in sequence in the next video we'll solve uh, another problem which is a hybrid of uh, uh, array map and the sequence which was asked in uber's interview so uh, i hope you have learned something new today i'll see you in the next video thank you for your time